Well, one of the tools that the Federal Reserve has to manage monetary policy here in the U.S. are what we refer to as reserve requirements. And a reserve requirement is essentially a percentage of deposits that banks must keep on reserve. And banks are required to hold these on reserve for a number of different reasons. Uh, we know that the Fed, one of their responsibilities is to manage the banking system and to make sure that it is stable. And so what they've done is instituted reserve requirements to make sure that when consumers go into a bank, uh, that banks have some reserves on hand so that if you wanted to withdraw money, they would have the ability to meet your demand for a withdrawal. Uh, we know that because of the Great Depression and the run on the banks that there caused a great banking panic and so we're trying to instill confidence in the banking system by ensuring there are deposits available. Now, banks obviously don't hold all of our money on hand, right? That's not how they essentially do business because uh, they wouldn't be able to earn anything on that if they were just holding money for us in the event that we needed it someday. So what they do is they keep the reserves and then they loan the rest out at a higher interest rate, typically in the form of car loans, also in mortgage loans and different credit cards and things as a way of recovering some of their investment and also earning more revenue to help support their particular business. But the Federal Reserve, they can change this reserve requirement in order to either expand or contract the money supply, which we know is the amount of money available in circulation. And so they do so for various purposes. Now, one thing I'll add is that the Federal Reserve has not used such a policy for a number of different years. Uh, I believe it hasn't been used since the 1970s. So although reserve requirements represent a tool that the Federal Reserve can use, it is not used very regularly. Typically the Fed funds rate, the discount rate, and open market operations are used uh, more frequently than reserve requirements. But it still is an option, of course. And banks still create money by taking deposits and making loans. So, for example, if you were to go into your bank and you have $100 and you want to deposit this money, and so you're going to take it over to your bank, and your bank's going to accept that and they're going to go ahead and deposit it for you. And so the bank's going to do two things at this point. Uh, the first thing is they're going to hold some money on reserve. So assuming a 10% reserve requirement, the bank is going to put $10 on reserve. And then they're going to go ahead and they're going to take the other 90 and they're going to create a loan. Now they may not exactly create one loan for $90, they'll obviously probably add that to additional uh, funds that it received for additional deposits and create a larger loan, of course, uh, but they can be used essentially for loans. So how this actually expands the money supply, let me give you a really good example. Uh, let's say that you're going to go to your bank and you're going to deposit $10,000. Uh, with a 10% reserve requirement, let's assume that because that's the, where it's currently at today, your bank is going to have to hold essentially $1,000 on hand. Meaning that they would be able to create a loan for $9,000. Okay, Pretty simple so far. Now, the beauty of this is that the bank can keep doing this over and over because eventually this $9,000 loan is going to make its way to a different financial institution of some kind and it's going to get it deposited in a bank of some kind and it's going to get uh, essentially uh, reserve taken on that and then loan on again. So let's go ahead and follow this through for a couple of lending cycles and see how it plays out. So this $9,000 makes it back and now another bank is going to go ahead and hold a reserve of course. So they're going to hold $900 on reserve and then essentially loan out $8,100. Okay, Let's do it one more lending cycle. So we have a deposit. 
somebody takes out that money, $8,100. And it doesn't have to be the same person, obviously. It can be broken up over a, a series of different transactions. And so according to the 10% reserve, we're going to hold $810, which means that we can loan out, let's see, about $7,290. Okay. And so simply from this $10,000 deposit initially, look at how much money we've created over here. And that's how banks create money. Now, from a simple $10,000 they were able to create loans of 9,000, 8,100, and 7,290. And we only did three lending cycles. We can continue to go on and on and on and see ultimately how much money can be created from simply this one deposit. So let's say that the Federal Reserve, let's say they wanted to expand the amount of money available in circulation. So they wanted to stimulate the economy. They wanted to make it so that more money was available so that people can turn, obtain that and then obviously purchase goods and services with that. So let's just say that they change the reserve requirement from 10% to 5%. What kind of effect would that have? Well, let's do this one more time and see what would happen. So once again, Let's create our deposit column over here. And let's assume that we deposit $10,000. Obviously, we're going to have to keep some type of reserve, of course. So let's go ahead and assume that we reserve that 5%, which, of course, is going to be $500. And then we're going to, of course, be able to make a loan now. And so we can go ahead and loan out the rest. And so we have $9,500 to loan out, which means that is going to be deposited at some point. And then we can in turn take another reserve, which would be $475. And then we can then loan out the rest. So $9,025. That in turn gets deposited. 5% of that would be $451 and let's see 25 cents and then we can in turn loan out $8,537 and it looks like 75 cents and so look at the difference between the two you know simply by changing this reserve requirement from 10 percent over here to five percent you know the first loan 9,000. Well, we're loaning 9,500 over here. The second loan, 8,100. We're loaning 9,025 here. And the last one, 7,290. We're loaning almost 8,000, over 800, or $8,500 altogether. And so if you add this column up and compare it to the first one, you'll realize how much more money is being created. And so by manipulating that reserve requirement, the Federal Reserve can allow banks to expand the supply of money much more quickly. Now, on the other side, if it was concerned about inflation, it would do the opposite. Maybe it would raise the reserve requirement from 10% to, let's say, 12, 13, maybe 15. And what that would do is that would make it so that banks had to keep more money on reserve, thus not being able to loan as much out, which would essentially contract the amount of money available in circulation. It would not allow them to expand it as significantly as they were before. So, as I said before, reserve requirements are not used very frequently. It is simply one tool available, uh, but obviously banks are a primary and component. They don't physically create money, but as you can see here from this example, through taking deposits and making loans, they certainly do create money in a sense.